Hello, I'm Coach Fry, and welcome to Scorekeeping 101, Lesson 10. What you're going to do in this lesson is score an actual Grand Slam home run. As you probably know by now, a Grand Slam home run is simply a home run when there are three runners on base, resulting in four runs for the team on offense. The Grand Slam you will score is the one Sean hit in November 2010 in the last game of the winter ball season. It was actually captured on video and you will hear all the excitement of his teammates when he plastered the ball into left field. You will see the fielders still chasing the ball as Sean hits the third base. He actually rounded the, the bases under 18 seconds, so he's really traveling. The ball was measured at 264 feet. The left field wall at Yankee Stadium is only 308 feet, so that gives you an appreciation of how far he hit the ball at 8 years old. What I did was revisit the scorebook of the actual game in which he hit the home run and recreated the scenario that placed the three runners on base. It was a walk, a hit, and a bunt, and all the recording activity that goes with it. And then there was the home run. So you will have an opportunity to see the finished product of each one of the runners. So that's it, and let's roll. On the video after this slide, Sean is seen hitting this Grand Slam home run picture below. How would the four scores look if batter number one walked on four straight balls, batter number two hit a single to left field with two strikes, and batter number one advanced to second base? Batter number three bunted for a single on first pitch, and batters number one and two advanced one base. And then batter number four hit a Grand Slam home run with two balls. Only a good one, Sean. Come on, Sean. Come on, Sean. You let it. You let it. All three. Yeah, okay. Oh, Go home, Sean. Go home, Sean. Go home. Good job, Sean. I enjoy watching that uh, Grand Slam home run. That was his second Grand Slam in three games and his fourth home run. Okay, let's get started on these slides. What you're looking at is the finished slide of batter number one. And to the right... I made entries that you would make in order as they occurred. As an example, when the first ball is thrown, and it's a ball, you would enter the mark in the section for the three balls. You'd follow that with the second ball when it was thrown, and the next, that next mark would be entered. And then the third would also be entered. Now, when the pitcher threw the fourth ball in the batter was awarded based on balls, you would draw a line from home to third base as it's written, as it's done here, and put BB up in the uh, activity box in the right hand corner. Now, nothing else would be done on that slide until the next batter comes up. If the batter struck out and that ended the inning, nothing else would be done with this with this score uh, square. But as you can see, there was uh, batter number two hit a single, and so you, uh, this uh, runner, now he's a runner, would move to second, and then when the next batter came up and bunted, he moved to third, and then when there was a home run hit, he came on into home plate. And there's a line between each base along the baseline 
of the activity. And that's pretty much it for this uh, particular batter. Okay, this is batter number two, uniform number three, and this is the order of entries just like before. Now everything he does may impact uh, the score uh, square previously by batter number one, and that is always the case when you're doing score keeping. He, uh, the first strike was thrown and it's entered there. The second strike was thrown and it was entered. You never show the third strike or hit because it's assumed based on another entry. Here he has uh, 1B, which means a single. And so that the third strike that was thrown was a uh, hit. Now, if a person hits a ball, or fouls a ball, it's always a strike, even if it would have been called a ball had uh, he not swung at the, the ball. Now here the ball uh, was hit to left field and it's entered in the, the right upper corner of the score square, and that's the activity square, and a line is drawn to first on the hit. And that pretty well is all you will need to do until uh, the next batter comes up and in this case, uh, he moved a second on a bunt uh, by batter three uh, hit. And the line is drawn from first to second base. And that's where he stays. And no other activity is done until the next batter comes up and knocks home run. And then you draw a line from uh, second to third and from third to home to wrap up the, uh, the hit. I, I put the arrow showing where the hit was to number seven, uh, batter, batter, uh, building position number seven. Uh, you can do something uh, similar to that. I had to use the same type of lines because that's all I had. But uh, if he's actually doing it on the scorecard, it'd be just a little bit different, a little bit more clear. But there's nothing else that needs to be done on this one. Now, this is the score square of batter number three. And his uniform is number nine, and this is the order of entry. Now you will be looking at the two previous squares every time there's some activity in the field or in the batting box. And so you now have three open squares that you're working on. This batter bunted on the first thrown pitch and made it to base safely. So you would draw a line from home plate to first base. You see where I drew that tiny little green line uh, that's actually towards short stop, but it stops short. And whether or not you uh, make a mark where the ball went is up to you or is up to the league. I did just to show you that it could be done. Now, and the batter is on first, and, and nothing else occurs with him. I did write BNT for bunt up in the activity corner, up in the right-hand side. Now, if there were three outs, that would be the end of it. There were, the bases would be loaded, and everybody comes off the field, and everybody's unhappy, except the team on defense are happy. But that's all that's done. But here, because the next batter knocked a home run, you're going to draw a line between uh, first and second, second and third, and third and home, just as I did here. And that pretty well ends this particular square. I do want to mention that these score squares are in a row for each inning. And then I think there's 10 innings in the score right book. Also, the, uh, the color of the ink is blue for the home team and red for the visitors. Uh, you can look at uh, slide number two in this lesson. You'll see uh, one of the inside pages of a uh, scorebook. Now, this is batter number four, uniform number eight, order of entries. Uh, there was a first ball entered and then a second ball entered that was thrown. Uh, then he got his hit and the hit went over the left field fence. So you draw it outside of the park. They didn't have a fence where Sean hit the grand slam. 
but they don't have trees inside the ballpark, so he hit it past the trees. The, uh, and it can be recorded as a Grand Slam home run or just a home run. And I do want to say this. Uh, some scorekeepers actually darken in the circle completely when uh, there's a score. Not just a home run, but a score. And so she can look down the uh, row and Sammy scores uh, were made. Uh, it's just something you can do if you choose to do choose to do it. Now, since the, there was just one single play, uh, you would uh, put the line uh, around all the baselines from first to, from home to first, first to second, second to third, third to home. And then in the uh, left-hand corner below, that's the number of runs scored. This is different from runs batted in. On the play, there was one run and three RBIs, but for here is just uh, four uh, total runs. Uh, Scorekeeping can become very complicated uh, at the uh, advanced uh, levels, but for our level at, for which this teaches, it's not necessary to worry about RBIs and all that other uh, information. Let the managers worry about that. But this pretty well wraps it up, and, and you update all four slides or four squares to make sure that uh, all the information is correct. And that pretty well uh, ends the uh, entry for the four uh, batters. Well, you've completed all the uh, lessons uh, except for the closing, and uh, that's where we want to say goodbye to you. And a lot what you've learned uh, but anyway uh, proceed to uh, lesson number 11 so we can do just that